Let's pray. Father God, as I stand before your congregation to deliver this message of faith, I humbly pray for your anointing and guidance. And I ask you to fill me with your spirit, that every word I speak may be inspired by you and touch the hearts of those who are listening. Grant me clarity and conviction as I deliver this message in faith, the key to pleasing you. As we embark on this journey through your word, may your presence be palpable in this place and drawing us closer to you and transforming our lives from glory to glory and uniting a deeper faith within us all. We pray for all this in Jesus' name. Amen. Like the Apostle Paul said, faith, hope, and love. These three virtues are paramount, yet among them, love reigns supreme. But allow me to impart one more insight. The greatness of love stems from its foundation in faith. The starting point of this triad. This is why Paul started the word faith and ended with the word love. As I share with you the faith of these three today, let us acknowledge that our journey of faith is not always smooth sailing. There are times when doubts assail us and storms of life threaten and overwhelm our trust in God truth. Yet, it is precisely in these moments of struggle that our faith is tested and also refined. I believe that most of you have already experienced something similar to this. Today, we delve into the timeless truth of faith as the key to pleasing God with the hope of encouraging those among you, among us, who may be wrestling with doubts and certainties. So let us together explore the profound significance of faith in our Christian journey and how it shapes our relationship with our Heavenly Father. Let's first turn our eyes to Hebrews chapter 11 verse 6 where the Word of God illuminates the essence of faith and its transformative power in our lives. And it says, And without faith, it is impossible to please God because anyone who comes to Him must believe that He, is good, that he exists and that He rewards those who honestly seek Him. You want to say amen to that? This verse leads us to some very fundamental questions as we journey in our faith life with our God, such as, what is faith? Why do we need faith? And how does the faith work in our lives? Even when we go through difficult times and walking through the shadow of life, what is faith? In the midst of our struggles, it's essential to remind ourselves of what faith truly entails. Faith is not about having all the answers or understanding everything perfectly. It is rather about confidently trusting in the character of God even when circumstances seem bleak and prayers appear unanswered. It is about clinging to the promises of God's word. Cling to the, that, that fact. You still remember when Mindy prayed in the opening prayer? Cling to that fact that we are children of God. We are in His care. We have His promises in His wonderful guide, guidelines and guidance. It's about clinging to the promise of God's word, knowing that He is faithful to fulfill them even in the face of doubt, uncertainty, 
meaninglessness, even in pointlessness. As we navigate the challenges of life, let us anchor our faith in the unwavering love. Do you feel that unwavering love now, right? And faithfulness of our Heavenly Father. Again, faith is not a mere acknowledgement of God's existence. It is a radical trust in His character, His promises, and His unfailing love, even when life's storms rage around us. The pages of Hebrews chapter 11, known as the Faith Hall of Fame, unveil to us the lives of spiritual giants like Abraham and Noah and Moses and the people like whose unwavering faith propelled them into divine destiny. First, consider Abraham, who in obedience left the familiar comforts of his homeland and all different kinds of idols to follow lead of God and follow the call to an unknown land, solely trusting, trusting in God's provision and guidance. He doesn't know where else to go. But God knows his destination just like God knows each of our directions and destinations. And reflect on Noah, who, amidst ridicule and skepticism, faithfully built an ark according to God's command, demonstrating his unshakable belief in God's promise of deliverance. What about Moses? Let's, let's ponder Moses who, with boldness born of faith, led the Israelites out of bondage in Egypt, guided by his unwavering conviction in God's faithfulness and deliverance, yet, amidst the beauty of faith, there are often misconceptions that cloud our understanding. Some may view faith as a blind leap into the unknown, a mere act of wishful thinking, you know, that's not faith. That's, danger, that's, that's a dangerous kind of act of their lives. However, true faith, true faith stems from a right relationship with a person of the triune God. And the true faith is also rooted in a deep knowledge of God's word and his unwavering faithfulness in the words throughout your life. It is about confidently stepping out in obedience, knowing that our God is trustworthy and true always. Amen. Is that right? Is that what you know about your faith so far? True faith, my beloved congregation, is not passive, but active. It compels us to move forward in obedience, even when the path of hell seems rough, uncertain. It empowers us to cling to God's promises with unwavering confidence, knowing that He is faithful to fulfill them for me and for you, for all of us. And it emboldens us to live lives of courage and conviction, no matter what. Securing in the knowledge that our Heavenly Father walks with us every step of the way. Let us take the example of Noah. Turning to verse 7, we encounter the inspiring story of Noah, a man of faith who obed obediently built an ark according to God's instructions, despite facing ridicule and opposition from his peers. And it says, by faith, Noah, when warned about things not yet seen, not yet seen, you know, <clears throat> excuse me, in holy fear, built an ark to save his family. By his faith, he condemned the world and became an heir of righteousness that is in keeping with faith. 
We must know that Noah did not start building the ark out of fear of God's judgment, but fear of God. That's totally different. Rather, he built the ark because he heard the joyful news of God's salvation toward him. We do not have faith out of fear of judgment or fear of going to hell. Our faith is a gift from God given to us because of the gift of salvation from God alone. Do you believe in God out of fear, out of dread? Or do you believe in Him because you trust in His faithfulness and eternal love for you? Amen. I believe in God because I know He is faithful. He's faithful and loving to me, to my family, to my wife, to my kids always, even to my congregation here in Yuba City. I need to say that because I need to survive here. Ah, ah. You don't say amen that to, to that one, right? My faith is not, is not based on fear or dreadfulness, go to hell. But on experiencing His grace and mercy and forgiveness and steadfast love in my life. How about you? And you? Yes. Noah's faith was demonstrated through his unwavering obedience to God's word. He trusted in God's warning about the impending flood and judgment and took decisive action to prepare for it in faith, even though it meant enduring years of toil and ridicule from those around him. But Noah was not bothered or distracted by them at all. Rather, he chose to trust in God and His Word and that promise and act in obedience just like he always chooses to trust in and His Word and act in obedience. Like Noah, many of us may find ourselves in situations where our faith is tested by the doubts and criticisms of others. We hate it, honestly. Yet, Noah's example reminds us that true faith is not deterred by external circumstances or the opinions of others. It perseveres in obedience even when the world around us seems to mock our faith and convictions in Christ. But that's okay. We're all fine with that. Through Noah's example, we learn that genuine faith is not passive or indifferent. It prompts us to action. It requires us to step out in obedience. Even when the world around us mocks and doubts us, Noah's faith serves as a timeless reminder of the transformative power of trusting in God's word. And plus, acting upon it. Not simply knowing and hearing the word of God, but acting upon it. Like Noah, we are called to walk in faith, not by sight. Trusting in God's promises and obeying His word, regardless of His circumstances and opinions of others. Our faith journey may not always be easy. And we may face obstacles in the Opposition along the way, but we can take comfort in knowing that God is faithful to fulfill His promises to those who trust in Him. Amen. Amen. Yes. Faith is not about having all the answers or understanding everything perfectly. We are not invited to knowing everything perfectly at all. But we are invited to knowing Him, who is our Father, who is our steadfast love. I know my wife would love me steadfastly, but he would, she wouldn't. I don't know. But God does always to me, right? She's not here today. <laughs> oh, she is? 
Oh, she does? Oh, I'm sorry. I made a big mistake. I'm in trouble. Oh, okay, great. <laughs> you know, it's about trusting in the one who does. As we honestly seek God and diligently follow His lead, we will experience His faithfulness and the rewards of a life lived in alignment with His will. As we reflect on our own faith journey, let us ask ourselves, do we truly believe in the existence of God and plus and His promises? As we actively seeking Him in our lives through prayer, word, obedience, and trust, and the like, let us examine our hearts and commit ourselves to cultivating a deeper and more vibrant faith in our lives that pleases God. A faith that is characterized by trust, obedience, and wavering devotion to our Heavenly Father. May the example of Noah inspire us to set, step out in faith even when the world around us doubts and or scoffs. And may our lives be a living testimony to the transformative power of faith as we walk in obedience and experience the abundant blessings of life and surrender to God. This who we are and this is what we are doing in that faith let us pray heavenly father we thank you for the gift of faith and the privilege the privilege and honor of knowing you strengthen our faith lord and help us to trust you more fully in all areas of our lives May our faith be pleasing in your sight, O oh God, as we seek to honor and glorify you in all that we do. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.